Hey, hi, welcome back. Thank you uh, for showing up. For those of you who are new, uh, my name is Rick Morrow. This is my uh, channel, Spare Tree on Wine. Uh, welcome. It's a channel about uh, wine and uh, people and uh, storytelling. And so I get a little education, uh, just some basic things. Um, just uh, come every week, uh, chill out, like the, what I like to call a spill and chill. And uh, welcome. I'm going to open up a bottle of Chardonnay here. Um, this is what this, this episode's about. It's a 10 part series. This is uh, California. And uh, this is the second episode. The first episode was on uh, regions. And um, I just like to just show the basics. Um, as time goes on, you'll have a little more idea how things work in the wine world and uh, just gives you some pointers and kind of a compass to see what direction you would need to go uh, financially and uh, taste in your palate and so forth but that'll happen over time just like everything else does with wine so uh, again Rick Morrow Spirit Tree Unwind um, for those of you who are new here uh, there is a subscribe uh, tab down below and uh, you can hit that and I will show up every week at your request but don't forget to hit the bell there's a little bell right next to it and if you like it there's a little thumbs up that that goes a long way so but that's up to you um, I have to earn earn your likes so I appreciate it um, so again this is uh, like I said last week this is to the ladies um, California Chardonnay is the queen of uh, California grapes um, appropriate um, 90 about 98,000 acres of this great planet in California it's a it's a very vast very popular uh, varietal and it's grown all over California so I hope you have your uh, glass pour your own glass and let's Let's chill out. Spill and chill. Sounds good, doesn't it? Okay. Uh, again, this this is all basic stuff. Um, I'm not a certified sommelier. Um, I've been in the wine industry for the past 17 years. I grew up uh, as a kid in upstate New York, uh, making wine with helping neighbors. My dad and uh, some other uh, people in the area who were making wine all for personal consumption so it was just a part of life and uh, it just never left me and I have really just enjoyed it. it's a very personable thing with me and I hope it is with you um, it's just really the culture of it with family and friends and, and what goes better with wine is storytelling I mean how many times you sit around the the, the holidays or the family gatherings and uh, the wine was out and the stories just start coming along right with it. So it's a good diet for the soul, wine and stories. And uh, so again, we'll uh, we'll further on with this, we'll learn some. So again, welcome. So as I said, this is California Chardonnay, dedicated to the ladies. There's a love story at the end of this segment. I hope you stick around and check it out. It's a true story. Uh, I wrote it myself. It's been a growing project. It's more of a short story, a little poetry in there. But uh, so stick around and uh, I'll share it with you. I'll, me and Regal will share it with you. And uh, hope you hope you like it. It's a true story and it's pretty fascinating. So back to the Back to the Chardonnay. Um, like I said, there is 98,000 acres of this planet in California. Uh, it's a dry grape, medium to full body, and there's two different Chardonnays. There's oaked, which is in oak barrels, and there's unoaked, which is in stainless steel tanks. This is what I'm drinking is an unoaked. I like unoaked. Um, anybody drinks Sauvignon Blanc, you like that crisp fruit. Um, it just really get the the essence of the fruit um, so yeah I you know nothing wrong with oak it's just my style I prefer 
I prefer uh, on oak chardonnay. So uh, with the oak chardonnay, you're going to get flavors of apple, pears, lemon, pineapple, vanilla, and butter and cream. Um, you're going to get get some of that on the on oak. Then uh, what traditionally a lot of people are exposed to is the oak, um, California oak. Um, they can be a bit oak uh, creamy that comes from a uh, malactic fermentation it's a double fermentation process sometimes it's natural sometimes it's induced uh, basically uh, what some winemakers do that let the the juice ferment in the grape and and the grapes will burst and then they go through a second fermentation so uh, that's where the cream comes from malactic so uh, just a little something there um, when you hear people talk about creamy Chardonnays. Um, so with the oak, you're going to get flavors of apple, pear, lemon, pineapple, uh, vanilla. The vanilla comes from American oak. That has a big influence. You can get a lot of that influence from American oak. And uh, again, butter and creamy. Um, so yeah, that's that's oak. And then uh, with the young oak, in the, in the stainless steel tanks. Uh, more desirable is the cooler climates uh, of California. And um, you're gonna get flavors of citrus, uh, grapefruit, lemon, butter, little biscuit and honey. Um, really interesting flavors and uh, very, very delicious, especially on a hot summer day. And uh, the warmer, the warmer climate uh, like I said, the first one was the cooler climate. The warmer climate is uh, you get tropical flavors such as banana, mango, um, melon, peach, pineapple, cream, butter. That's a busy one. Uh, the warmer climate, you get more of those tropical flavors. And uh, again, a great summer, summer wine to hang out on an evening with some friends and just to drink a nice chilled bottle. Uh, so, spell and chill. Then, uh, you know, the serving temperature, they can vary on the oak and unoaked. Uh, the oak, you want 54 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 12 Celsius to 13 Celsius for our friends, uh, other parts of the world, our friends in Canada. Um, so, yeah, oak, 54 degrees to 56 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 12 to 13 degrees Celsius. That's for the oak. Um, problem is with oak, if you get it too chilled, it closes up the fruit. It just it really, it's like a door. It just shuts it closed and you just don't get the fruit. So, oak, you don't want to really get it too cold and you think something's wrong with the wine. Um, it's just something to, to think about. Uh, people throw it in a refrigerator or, or an ice chest and forget about it and they open it. So, what's, what's wrong with this? I can't, just can't taste anything. Too cold. Um, so, that's oak. Then there's uh, unoaked, like I said, which I'm drinking. And uh, that's going to be cooler, around 48 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, um, 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. I mean, when you get down without the oak, you can bring the temperatures down lower. So you're going to get that, uh, that real flavor of the citrusy and the, and the crisp of, of the fruit. And, uh, always invite you back for more just you just get that flavor and living here in Florida we like uh, a cold Chardonnay so yeah remember oaked 54 to 56 degrees Fahrenheit chilled at uh, 12 to 13 Celsius unoaked 48 to 50 degrees uh, 8 to 10 Celsius and uh, just uh, by those guidelines you'll be enjoying a great bottle of Chardonnay so uh, another thing I like to uh, include in this segment, um, again, just some basic guidelines. Just like I said, this is all a compass just to get you out there and uh, just start exploring uh, what's out there. So uh, this is what it's uh, basically a flavor profile of some of the areas. And I'll just run through them real quick. Uh, it's uh, like Carneros, it's the north coast. You heard me talk about the, the regions in my previous video. If you haven't, you go back and check it out. Um, you get some brisk acidity out of that. Uh, 
the Russian River, the North Coast, you get some uh, flinty fruit. Uh, again, these are flavor profiles. Just uh, discover your palate and, and uh, you'll try different types of these and your palate will tell you, you know, what you enjoy. Uh, kind of process of elimination. But over time, your palate's going to change too. That always does um, over the years. And uh, I'll get into that another time when we do a, a palate uh, segment about how your palate works and uh, all the interesting things that go along with it. So even your age can determine um, what, what uh, you're drinking. So uh, then there's a the Monterey Central Coast. You get mango, guava, uh, Santa Barbara, which is the South Central Coast. They're richer, more tropical fruit. And uh, then Alexander Valley, creamy, silky, that's the North Coast. And a uh, long time ago, I was reading an article in one of the wine magazines. And uh, the earlier days, there was more rules than there is now. The, the rule is there's no rules. And that kind of the way wine is being put out these days, um, there's so many different styles. Um, you could just about pair anything. So. Uh, the old days, people would, you know, pairing a, a Chardonnay with a steak, you know, they all know you got to have a, a nice hearty red wine, which is, you, which is great, you know, and I'll explain that in my other upcoming segments. But if you want to have a, a Chardonnay with a steak, uh, Alexander Valley, uh, the creamy, silky, uh, long as there's oak, you don't want to un-oak, you want an oaked Chardonnay. Um, and with that creamy in there, creaminess in there with the fats and the steak, it really complements each other. So if you're ever uh, looking at a wine list, you say, you know what, I'll be adventurous tonight, which this is, this is wine, you want to be adventurous. It's uh, like I said in my previous episode, you have your whole life ahead of you. Um, so yeah, give it a go. I mean, it's just another experience in the wine world. Um, a nice uh, cut of steak, uh, grill to your perfection and uh, try it with a Alexander Valley uh, oaked Chardonnay. Um, you may be surprised. And um, on the front of the bottle or the back of the bottle, it's always in small print, sometimes you really have to look for it. The alcohol content and the Chardonnay varietals run between 13.5 to 15 percent. So, uh, just in case some of you are uh, inter you know, curious about that. Um, Another fun thing to do is you have some friends over, uh, have some of the friends bring a bottle of oak chardonnay and have the other group of friends bring an un oak chardonnay. So one oaked bottle and one un oaked bottle, or two or three, whatever good time you, you, you tend to have. So, uh, and you, you could compare the differences you know try to try to get them from the same region north coast south coast central coast uh, there'll be a little bit more of the profiles of the wine will be a little bit more of the same and uh, have fun with it um, what I am doing is I made these little sheets up you can request them by your email address I can send them to you it's uh, it's just a little tasting uh, sheet you can write down your own notes. I hope you can see it. And uh, it's just something fun to keep, you know, have ready. You just print them off on your uh, your printer off your computer. And I have a second page, which is uh, for notes. So, you know, you're here to have fun. You're here to enjoy. There's, there's no pressure here. Um, you do it in your own comfort zone. And uh, pick a... Pick a wingman. Like I said, uh, Regal, he's my wingman. Pick a wingman and uh, do this together. You know, have fun. Take down your notes, compare. And uh, when, you, when you request these, you'll see them a lot clearer, of course, when you print them out. And um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a Spare Tree on Wine tasting sheets, which I... I think I'm going to call uh, Spill and Chill University. Why not? So, um, what we're going to do, we're going to grab Regal and uh, we're going to do uh, some story time. So, I'm going to have to go in the story box 
I get out this week's story. It's the only place I keep them, so I'll, I'll turn my back a little bit, but uh, I have to get it out. called End of the Innocence. Or can you see it? End of the Innocence. It's a true story. It's about my parents. They met in, uh, they met in World War II. Um, the story will explain it. Um, different time than uh, any of us have ever experienced. It's uh, a time that I don't think a lot of people really understand or realize the, the power and the forces um, affects the way we live today. Um, there's a lot of a lot of things that uh, took place that are uh, every morning you wake up and every night you go to bed. There's a rhythm that we all uh, live by, and just our everyday life. A lot of the rhythm comes from this time, and. Uh, I just want to share some of it with you. So Regal and I are going to go uh, check this out. Hope you come along. It's called End of the Innocence. Okay. Regal and I are back. And like I said, I was going to have a love story. Excuse my reading glasses or it ain't happening, <laughs> unless I have these on. So again, I wanna say, this is a story about my parents who met in World War II um, in 1944 in a USO club. And this story reflects on their experience, but not only their experience, but the deep love for each other and uh, all the opposing forces, and they just were meant to be. We're meant to be together. So, uh, again, end of the innocence. And this is how it all started. It was the spring of 1944. As two people were about to embark on a path they have not yet stepped on. This path was to begin an ocean away in another country and in another time, as no turbulence has ever been brought forth in modern or ancient times. As a D-Day invasion was on the billboard of humanity with all the odds and impact of that time are still being measured to this day. His name of 19 years, old, years of age was Thomas Dominic Morrow from a place not widely known to the world, a place in upstate New York called Syracuse. Like many other young servicemen of off on liberty at that time headed for the local USO club for provisions a cup of coffee some donuts and some consoling and much needed attention as this was in Northern Ireland during a period of time in 1944. I know it's a little long now Reed. He's been through this a couple times in dress rehearsal. The coffee was warm and the consoling was barely lukewarm. But the temperature at this moment was about to change forever for the next 45 years. This 15-year-old innocent girl that lies in waiting by the name of Patricia Marion Tate of Irish and Scottish descent had no interest in Thomas Dominic. So she was to be compliant to the rules that stated, no U.S. servicemen, coffee and donuts only, no more. Thomas Dominic leaned over and asked Patricia Marion if she would share a dance with him. She being the daughter of the appointed guardian of all the USO clubs in Ireland by the Queen Majesty herself, by no means could she accept his invitation and so Patricia Marion hurried herself off to the ladies room. So as in pursuit, the 19 year old sailor, Thomas Dominic waited outside of the ladies room with much anticipation. When she finally exited the ladies' room, Thomas Dominic said in a shy, firm manner, sort of way, 
He said, can I walk you home tonight? With much reserved hesitation, she accepted his second invitation on this cold spring rainy night in Northern Ireland. With its brick laden streets and cobblestone paths, for within these laden paths, these streets have collected all but one more story to only be thrusted into the rise of forward time. As these cobblestone and brick paths have been collecting the stories of so many souls for hundreds of years past for this to be as one more in the twilight of more dawns to come. As to be on her mind of anxiousness of her surroundings, the front stoop of her house ever becoming larger with every step and every deep breath and every pounding heartbeat. Forever closer they came to the dimly lit stoop for only to pause the short journey. Hoping and praying her mom, Sarah Tate, was not home to discover that she was in the company of a very young U.S. serviceman of Catholic descent of this cold and rainy, foggy Irish night. Now, how many opposing forces could you have between two young people? A world war, two different cultures, and two different backgrounds of religion and a mother in her own right to protect her only child from the day-to-day -day problems of bringing up a young, attractive girl with a world war on and thousands of young U.S. servicemen milling about to exercise their liberties with no recourse to be observed in their own proper channels. So as all the fences in the above as stated and for the all to come into the future were about to be hurdled. No fanfare, no reference, just strength. This is a love and a life that was truly earned. Within their own insecurities and their own adolescent hopes and dreams of the entire troubled world of biblical proportions bearing down on them, not even they could comprehend. It's more fences above and beyond that any relationship could endure that was ahead of them. Yet this monumental horizon that lies awaiting in the threshold of history was yet to be discovered. Two young minds, two young hearts that will not be denied each other no matter how rough the road, whether they were chosen or chose each other, they did not care of the obstacles, past or present. They simply do no better. Thank God for the love of two people, for them to create themselves in their own image as one. Now as a new world was about to take hold, as they were only a tiny, tiny piece of it. But for the many of the never ever ending decades to come and for the willing and not so willing souls to climb aboard, I waited too well and who was up for the journey. So many years into the future, as decades passed, on a warm summer's day on the river of fresh water, as the layers of children of his youth swim below him as the song End of the Innocence by Don Henley was playing on the tape deck. So incredibly appropriate as this was the summer of 1990. Thomas Dominic, my father, for me to see him in self-contemplation of his life, he then turned to me as I was taking in the moment of time and the song, as if in a rush of the self enduring contemplation that was going through his mind, only to catch me off guard, not only looking into my eyes, but into my soul. I knew the platform, but not the forwarding comment. He looked at me with an amazement on his face, and then he spoke. I just stopped in for a cup of coffee, he said. After summing up his life and his legacy in that short burst of his own humanity, for that was his last summer for him to share himself with us as the Lord delivered him to ready for the next path of eternity. Now this is the power of two people who knew no better, no matter how hard and how tough, they would not quit on each other. And here we stand. Once again, the path is laid out in front of the two lovers from where a vast ocean and a world war could not come between them. Thomas Dominic waits at the gate of the path with his loving arms out to his first love, Patricia Marion Tate, the girl of Scottish-Irish descent. 
If she accepts his loving reach for the second time, she, was, she has stepped into the final and forever path, the path of eternity, to forever to be as one. So, I just felt I had to uh, put that into words. I wrote that a couple years ago after my mom had passed away, because I thought that their, st their story was, ex was very unique, and there was a lot of them like that. Um, and that was just the beginning. My father was shipped back out to the South Pacific at an LST, and he was in the two major invasions while he left my mother behind. Um, them days was common for soldiers to servicemen to get married because uh, they didn't know if they're gonna come back. And uh, so he left my mom in Ireland, and uh, she was uh, expecting my brother Roy. So he uh, ended up in the invasion of uh, Saipan and Okinawa, actively in the middle of Okinawa. If anybody knows history, um, he was there on the morning of April 7th, 1945. And um, kamikazes came in, they just devastated the fleet. They were uh, just amazing. Um, the history, um, you can see, you can just Google and see what happened that morning. But as he was on the deck of his ship, uh, Kamikaze came down straight to the ship as he laid on the deck behind a, a, a gun embankment and he just watched the bullets rattle past his head. And when the plane cleared the ship, it slammed into the ship next to him, the 447. It burst in the flames and sank. He stood there and watched the whole thing. It was horrible. Um, he came through that and went through a typhoon. He said he'd see a ship next to him. There was a big typhoon in the way to Okinawa. His ship would dip behind a wave. He'd come back up. The ship that was there 30 seconds ago was gone. So he made it through that. My mom on the way home in 1946 flew to New York with my brother Roy in her arms. Um, they, the plane they were on, it was a two engine, might have been a DC-3. Had to make an emergency landing, I believe it was Greenland. One of the engines went out. They lost an engine. Um, so they made it, they made it to Greenland. It was just all these amazing forces and they just kept overcoming them, you know? And a lot of people didn't. And uh, so my father met my mom in New York a year and a half later two years, whatever it was, with his new son, my brother Roy, and the rest is history. So, the, yeah, I just like to include little stories at the end of the segments, just something to enjoy your glass of wine, uh, Chardonnay this week. So, like I said uh, earlier, uh, don't forget to uh, Request your spirit tree on wine. Tasting no cheats. I hope that's focusing, you can see it. Um, just e just uh, email me, myspirittreeonwine at gmail.com. Um, yeah, it's myspirittree at gmail. So uh, yeah, and I will send them to you. So, so hey, it was fun, I'm glad you uh, showed up. Uh, those of you new, uh, please, if this resonates with you and you think we can have some some uh, cool downtime together, hit the bar. Uh, so please subscribe. Uh, Regal and I will show up every week, give you some tidbits about uh, wine all over the world. Uh, me being in the industry for 17 years, I can I can share my experiences and my knowledge with it. And uh, if you really, if I earn your likes, hit the thumbs up and. Uh, like I said, I have to earn them, and I hope I can do that over time. So again, uh, Rick Morrow, Spirit Tree on Wine, me and Regal, and uh, just hit the, the bar, the bell, and we'll be back uh, next week to see you. Thank you so much. I hope to see you. God bless.